What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2022 Series 13 video. I, I almost said 2021 for some reason, I don't know. I'm really tired. Um, why am I tired? Because I just got done recording a video, it was a best of three with Pokesports Kevin, uh, and I didn't record his audio and we were talking to each other in the video so that video had to go down the drain which kind of sucks but uh, we did do a collab on his channel too so that one will be out in a couple of days but today I just thought um yet you know yesterday I uploaded that stream highlight where I actually gave my initial thoughts on all of the um restricted Pokemon that were mythical that we have access to in series 13 if you don't know series 13 we now have access to mythical Pokemon generally speaking uh you can build a team with them I built a Marshadow team, I built a Magearna team, it's cheese, and I built a fairly good Victini team. I actually think Victini is like probably one of the better ones. Um, but what I want to do today is make a quick little pre-series tier list. Obviously the series doesn't begin until September, but I have been playing in a couple of showdown room tours. I have been playing in a couple of best of threes with some buddies, with some teams we threw together, and we have a generally good idea uh, as to which mythicals are going to be game changing and which mythicals are going to be just bad just just absolutely abhorrently bad but yeah uh before we get into that if you guys enjoy this at any point in time do me a favor leave a like in the video subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because i bring you daily vgc content and answer my comment question of the day what do you think is the best mythical and what do you think is the worst mythical but yeah let's get into it so what i will say is that s tier is going to be reserved exclusively for mythicals that across it's not like in relation to other mythicals i'm gonna say this right off the bat it s tier is not relative to other mythicals this is a great mythical it's overall as a pokemon in the format because obviously there are other pokemon that you can use so let's start off by removing all the pokemon that are not in the game rest in peace to all the gen 4 mythicals it really narrows down the pool quite a bit it isn't as big of a game changer to include the mythicals as we might have thought initially uh, i believe that's all the meloetta is also not in the game so this is this this pool of pokemon that we're ranking today let's go ahead and start off with mew mew is very hard to rank I think that a good place to put Mew is going to be B tier. Why? Um, Mew has a lot going on for it. Uh, it has access to every single move in the game. Uh, that is a tutor or TR or TM. But something that I will note that um, you guys need to keep in mind. If you're using a Ditto in Series 13, you are throwing. There is no reason to use Ditto unless you're using Imposter. But most of the time, if you want to use a non-Imposter Ditto... Go ahead, just use Transform Mew. You can scarf it. Go ahead. It's okay to do it. I actually don't know how that interaction works, I'll be honest. I might be a little bit stupid, but yeah. That's just something I want to point out. It is a Transform Pokemon. Not that it matters. It's not like you can steal a Restricted you wouldn't have access to anyways, because we have unlimited Restricteds. But yeah, uh, this Pokemon, I think, is a solid B or maybe even A tier, uh, because it just has access to like every move in the game. The only thing that I think holds it back is the fact that Calyrex, Shadow, and Eveltal are on literally every single team. Uh, well, not literally every single team. Eveltal, though, might actually literally be on every team. It's hard to find a non-Eveltal team. Uh, but I think that's what holds it back. While Psychic normally would actually be pretty decent, um, being weak to those two Pokemon really holds it back. Obviously, you have access to like every single speed control that you really want other than Tailwind. Uh, you have Trick Room, you have Icy Wind, you have Electro Web. You got Helping Hand, you got so many tools. It's literally too many to, to note, or to, too many to name. Um, but also, you can go offensive. You could do like a, a Life Orb Nasty Plot set. It can do everything. B tier is probably where it's going to stay though. Celebi, I'm going to put it D. It's a worse Mew. Celebi is literally just a worse Mew. So what it's going to do is it's going to be a nasty plot Pokemon, and it's going to be a Mew that deals better with Gastrodon specifically, and that's like it. It's also good in the Kyogre. You're going to nasty plot. You're going to run like Iron Defense, not Iron Defense. You're going to run uh, Ancient Power, Giga Drain, and probably Expanding Force, and that's going to be what you do. It, it does nothing special. Jirachi, I also find equally bad, but I might put it at I'm kind of tempted to put it at D anyways. Um, it's another Psychic type. Psychics are just not great this format. And Jirachi at that, it 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 would be okay, right? If we didn't have Dynamax, because then you could, do, you could do like flinch stuff. But literally all it's going to do is run like Serene Grace Cheese. It's going to have Ice Punch. It's going to have Iron Head. Um, it's going to have Body Slam. I think the best thing that you could do for this guy is just give it like an Assault Vest. I think Scarf's actually quite bad. Um because you're locking yourself into doing like one thing. And that thing is usually just going to be like flinching as Ashen, since Ashen's like one of the few things you can guarantee won't Dynamax. Um, and that's like all it's super going to be reliable at. 
and and that's just not going to be great. It's it's not going to do anything too great. I think that like all of the early ones are like not phenomenal Pokemon. Oh, sorry, that that is a Google Drive cancel. There we go. Uh, but yeah, I think that all like the early ones are not phenomenal. Like the early mythical Pokemon, the fact that they're all psychic just makes them lose hard to some of the best Pokemon in the game, being Calyrex Shadow and Eveltal. Also Incineroar, none of these guys beat Incineroar except for maybe Mew, which is really funny. Victini is going to be an A tier, in my opinion. I think Victini's like actually super good. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for this. Victini has a, uh, an ab ability that increases the accuracy of its partner's moves by 1.1 times. Also, V-Create is 95% accurate, now it's 100, so that's really cool. Uh, V-Create's an absolute nuke if you run a, if you want to run a Choice Band or a Choice Scarf, it's a very good move. Personally though, I think that the best way to run Victini, generally speaking, is going to be to max out the HP um, and only run like a Jolly Nature with enough to outspeed Calyrex Shadow at plus one and then put the rest into attack because that max HP also makes Victini super good for eliminating everything it wants with um what's it called final gambit which if you don't know it takes your hp and basically whatever it, it does it deals damage equal to your hp stat so there are a lot of pokemon that are very annoying to deal with that have a decent hp stat but um some of the most annoying pokemon don't have a good hp stat and most restricted pokemon are sitting at around 100 if you actually see this here um calyrex has 100 dialga has 100 Giratina has 150, which is, you know, bigger. But uh, Groudon has 100, Kyogre has 100, Lunala has a higher HP set. Um, yeah, basically anything with 100 HP or lower, this thing's capable of one-shotting with Final Gambit. But one of the most annoying Pokemon that you're going to be able to KO with this uh, is going to be Trick Room Setters like Bronzong that will still have some use in the format. Uh, Clefairy is going to be one of the most important Pokemon to get rid of with this move. Uh, and Indeedy is another one because that follow me could be very annoying obviously you have to go we have to watch out for the focus sash though but having that option super good obviously you could pair it up with magirna for that um soul heart boost but overall i think that most victini are just going to run like this set if you're asking marcos why wouldn't you run uh a bolt strike victini that's actually event exclusive and you can't use event moves in the in the current format you can only use moves available in sword and shield so yeah uh another thing to note if you don't want to run choice scarf your Will-O-Wisp is like 90 something percent accurate, so that's kind of cool. That's that's a cool tool. I think Keldeo is a C. It's it's if we have here's the thing, we have Kyogre. We have access to Kyogre in this game. Just run Kyogre. It, it's faster than Kyogre, yes. It's got like what 106 base speed. Keldeo. What is its base speed? 108. It's got access to 108 base speed. That's like all it's really got in Kyogre. Yes, it has fighting stab, but you're, that's not super useful in this format. Um, really, I think the only thing Keldeo is going to be good at is like Colossal Teams. It's an alternative to Urshifu uh, Rapid Strikes. You can like Aqua Jet your Colossal and KO Incineroar's in one hit. That's all it's going to do. I think it's just going to be okay. But in a format where we don't have to choose between Kyogre and another water type, you're almost always going to choose Kyogre. It's hard to roll compress anything into Keldeo's specific niche. Genesect is going to be another C. Download is very good. Something you're going to note is most of these most of these mythicals want to run a choice scarf, which is super funny. Um, Genesect is literally just going to be like a scarf Pokemon with download. Um, notably, if you use Technoblast with uh, one of its drives, then uh, someone commented this in the video I uploaded the other day. Uh, you will get access to like the max moves that that comes with. But yeah, 99 base speed with a scarf isn't bad. You can run like a Jolly Nature. Uh, or even like a, a hasty nature if you don't want to decrease either attack stat and just, you know, throw off pretty strong U-turns. I guess I guess you don't want to use U-turn as often. Like Dynamax kind of killed U-turn in terms of like viability in a lot of Pokemon. But, you know, you have access to like... Uh, there are so many Scarf Pokemon in this format. Scarf, U-turn, Bug Buzz, um, Techno Blast. I don't know why I'm maxing out the attack if that's the case. Timid, sorry. There we go. Technoblast um, with a drive if you really want to, but probably not. Uh, yeah, it, it's just, it's it's got like bolt beam coverage in the form of like Blizzard and Thunderbolt. I don't even think it gets ice beam, does it? It does get ice beam. So yeah, you do have bolt beam coverage. 
that could be kind of cool. Uh, it's just like a generally okay Pokemon. I don't think it does anything too well. It does kind of wall out Zacian. You take Nutra from Sacred Sword. So if you want to run anything, I would honestly recommend just like Burn Drive plus Technoblast for KOing Zacian. Sorry, I keep going to this Google Drive. I don't know why I keep clicking on it by accident. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think that Genesect's just going to be like a solid mid tier. C is fine. Diancy, that is an F. I almost want to say it's not in the game. It shouldn't be in the game. Diancy's F. Why is Diancy F tier? Carbink has Sturdy. Diancy? Diancy is just a Carbink with an attack stat. Yeah, it has Diamond Storm, but that's really all of note. Yes, Diamond Storm will increase your defense by two stages, 50% of the time, but it seriously isn't worth it. I, the only thing you can really do is do like Body Press, Play Rough, Diamond Storm, Protect with like Leftovers, and probably just do some like, I, I guess you could try to one shot like Charizard and then throw the rest in like special defense and then just run like a, a body press set. But the fact that you're weak to steel moves is awful. A lot of restricteds run max steel type, uh, max steel spike. Uh, Dialga is able to one shot you. Zacian's able to one shot you relatively easily. Probably even if you do have a diamond storm boost, that's really bad for it. It's bad. If you're gonna run anything that, if you're gonna run a Diancy, you literally have a better, if, if you're using it for like trick room stuff, you might as well just run Carbank. Because Sturdy allows you to actually do something without getting one shot. So I think that you want to run Carbink in that situation. So Diancy somehow worse than one of the worst Pokemon in the game, in my opinion, for this format. If, if we didn't have so many good like Steel types running around, then yeah, maybe it'd be okay. Volcanion, that's going to be another C tier for me. I think Volcanion has one niche. Um, I haven't seen it too often, but it's basically just like a hard Zacian wall. Well, about as hard of a, Z uh, a Zacian wall as anything can be, because Zacian, like, just hits everything. Steam Eruption, super strong. You can one-shot a Groudon with it if you have rain. Um, it has access to Heat Wave as well, uh, or even Overheat if you really want to run that. Uh, Earth Power is also really good. And usually I've seen this thing with an Assault Vest, but it also isn't half bad with a Life Orb if you want to use it as a Dynamax Pokemon. Uh, but the fact that... Yes, it's, it's like, you know, immune to Kyogre, and that's kind of cool, but the fact that it has its stabs like interrupt each other in a way with its max moves is actually really bad because you know you max geyser all of a sudden your max flare is weaker you max flare all of a sudden your max geyser is uh weaker it's it's hard like this pokemon contradicts itself in a lot of ways and it's very difficult to find a use for it i think one of the moves on it that like needs to get a little bit more attention is actually haze in a format with um magirna haze can actually be an absurdly useful tool and this is one of the few pokemon that can hard wall up magirna you resist both of its stabs i think that if there is a pokemon that picks up in usage exclusively for magirna checking it's going to be this it is literally the magirna check obviously you don't want to run you know that in that case you don't want to run assault vest it's probably like a shookaberry set steam eruption that sort of thing and that's like not bad at all so yeah I think that Volcanion has a decent niche in the format. Not anything special, though. I might put it at B, but that's that's kind of generous. I'll be generous. Let's put it at B. Um, this is the only S tier. This is the only S tier. Magirna is one of the best Pokemon in the format, hands down. Soul Heart gives you a, a, a special attack boost if anything gets KO'd. It's the only Pokemon where I've faced it and I look at a Calyrex Ice that I can easily Behemoth Blade and I look at, Mage at a Magirna next to it and I go, hey, um, I don't want to KO the Calyrex Ice. And that's, that's, that's like bad. That's bad. If a Pokemon can do that where you're like, I really don't want to KO the thing next to it, despite that being my objective goal to win the game of KOing everything on the field. Um, if I KO that thing next to it, uh, this thing gets scarier and it can Dynamax and one shot things with its base 130 special attack set. If you run Steel Beam like a maniac, all of a sudden you have a 150 or 140 base power uh, max steel spike. Flare Cannon is also very good. It generally wants to run Trick Room. And yeah, you can literally position this thing strategically. If you know you're about to pick up a KO, you can just get your Magirna in next to it, and that basically gets a free plus one. Um, if you know that one of your Pokemon's about to get KO'd, switching the Magirna next to it, you'll get a free plus one. It is stupid. It is actually stupid. But yeah, it's going to be very good. Marshadow. That's a B. It, it does one thing. It's the anti-Dynamax Pokemon. Remember earlier how I said every, um, every Mythical wants to run... Um, Every mythical wants to run Scarf. This is actually like the Scarf mythical. Uh, you know, beyond the Victini, but basically Spectral Thief is a really cool move. You steal boosts from Pokemon and then you hit them back with it and it's 90 base power ghost. That's pretty cool. Choice Scarf, obviously you one shot like a Calyrex Shadow, but 
Uh, you can use this to deal massive damage to Zacian. Plus one Spectral Thief does like 60, 70%. So if it's chipped at all, you just get that KO and then you keep the plus one. If you're facing off versus like, because it's got, you know, 125 base speed, let's say you're facing off versus like a Thunderous that has plus two attack from Defiant and plus one speed, you're gonna outspeed it and go for a, a Spectral Thief, steal all those boosts and then KO it, and then all of a sudden you have a plus two uh, Mars Shadow that has a speed boost on top of the Choice Scarf, so it's it's like a KO machine. I think it has a lot of potential. It has a lot of potential to like run away with the game and just counter a Dynamax, but it's, it's very hard to position, so that's why it's only B tier. It could be A tier if it was any bulkier, but it doesn't really have the bulk that it needs to get the job done, especially the fact that it's a fighting type. Fighting types are generally not that great in restricted formats. So yeah. Zero Aura, it's... I'm, I'm gonna put it at B. If I'm putting these guys at B, Zero Aura is like the bottom of B. It's a fast fake out Pokemon. It's immune to Electroweb, so versus Regieleki, it can actually do something. Um, it did lose access to Knockoff, which is pretty bad, but you're pretty much just going to run like this. Protect. Maybe you'd run like Taunt if it gets it. Does it get Taunt? It does get Taunt. It, it's just going to be like a, a nice fast Pokemon. Can it one shot a Kyogre? Sometimes. Sometimes it can. Um, and that's kind of cool. It is slower than. <laughs> It is slower than um, Caloric Shadow, though, which is pretty bad, so that's why I don't like it. Maybe it wants Scarf. Maybe it's like the 8th Restricted that wants, or 8th Mythical that wants a Scarf. It's a B tier, in my opinion. It does bad versus Groudon. It does only okay versus Ashian. It's like even with it. Um, and in most of the time, it's not going to be super useful for a team. You want to run like a Thunderous, a Zapdos, or a Regieleki instead. But having that fake out could be kind of cool for very niche situations. Meltan. That's going to be S tier, because it's Meltan. Meltan's adorable. If you don't like Meltan, get out of my comment section. Melmetal is going to be a C tier, in my opinion. It, it It's it's weird, right? Melmetal wants to run a lot of different items. Melmetal wants to run a choice band, so it doesn't care about Intimidate, and it can double Iron Bash something. Melmetal wants to run a Safety Goggles, so it doesn't have to worry about a Moongus under Trick Room. Uh, Melmetal wants to run an Assault Vest, because uh, it will get one shot by Kyogre if it doesn't. It can't do all of those things. It 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 has one item slot syndrome, if that makes sense. Not not four move slot syndrome, it has one item slot syndrome. Melmetal will be as good as Calyrex Ice is, because it is a hard Calyrex Ice counter. It's capable of one-shotting it with double Iron Bash, Iron Fist, um, boosted move, whatever. Uh, and that's like its main niche. Obviously, you want like high horsepower. Protect isn't that bad. I think that Safety Goggles is the objective best item for it right now. Um, and its last move can be a couple of things. Darkest Lair Rat's not bad if you want to invest a little bit of special defense uh, to make sure you take like a Calyrex Shadow Specs or Life Orb Astral Barrage and then one shot it back. That could be very useful. But for the most part, it's it's literally just going to be used as like a brave Pokemon to underspeed Calyrex Ice and get KOs on it. And that's like all you can really say for it in this format, in my opinion. Doesn't like facing Groudon, doesn't like facing Kyogre, doesn't like facing... Actually, it likes Zacian. Zacian's fine, but it doesn't like one shot it in a lot of situations. So, yeah. Zarud. Zarud's actually kind of interesting. Um, I don't think it's great, but I think it has some potential. Does It doesn't get fake out, does it? Let me check that real quick. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, because I haven't seen this at all. It does not. It does not get fake out. What it does get, though, is Solar Blade, so it's like a good partner for Groudon, because of the sun. Um, it has Leaf Guard, so it's immune to burn, and it has Jungle Healing, which is actually a very interesting move. Not only does it heal you by one-fourth of your HP, so it's kind of like life doing that sense, but it also cures a status, which is absurd. Groudon hates getting burned, and that's that's an issue, right? If, if you get burned on your Groudon, the Groudon's basically useless. But if you jungle healing it, not only do you get that health back, but the Groudon also re retains um, or regains its health, so it, it can actually like get its attack stat back. So, yeah, I'm going to put it at like a solid C tier. I don't think it's D. Um, and yeah. As far as like niches for it, 105 base speed's kind of cool. If you want to run, not Stone Edge, but um, Rock Tomb, you can actually use that to like Rock Tomb a Charizard if Charizard's relevant at all. Um, and that will allow you to outspeed it because, what is it? One, two, three, four. I think you only need like that much to outspeed Charizard or something. I don't remember. But yeah, actually, let me see. That's bugging me. Because Charizard's base 100. The fact that it outspeeds a lot of the base 100s is actually really cool. 167, so yeah, 168. You could run like a set like this. And you got some decent bulk. You could run like Assault Vest if you don't want to run Jungle Healing, but I think Jungle Healing is like half the reason you'd want to run it. Close Combat, Rock Tomb, Solar Blade, and probably Darkest Lariat. And that's about all I can say for it. I don't think it's that great. It's a, it's like a hard check to Caloric Shadow. That's something really cool. It's a hard check to Kyogre. 
Uh, but in that case, if you want to beat Kyogre, you want to run like Power Whip. So yeah, very situational Pokemon, but I do want to explore it a little bit. Obviously though, if you're going to run Zarude, you need to run the objective best Zarude. Zarude data. Anyways, yeah. That's going to be my tier list. Um, this is obviously a very early, early metagame. We don't know how good these Pokemon are going to end up being in a couple of weeks from now. Uh, I think it's going to stay more or less the same, though. Honestly, a lot of Mythicals aren't going to see usage in this format for any reason other than the um, the novelty of them. Like, I think that we're going to see a lot at the beginning and then less and less of the format goes on since we have unlimited uh, uses of Restricteds. Uh, but notably, we, I have noticed that usually a team looks like one Mythical, three Restricteds, two normal Pokemon, which is actually fairly balanced if you really think about it. So, yeah, I really enjoy this format so far. Uh, I'll try to get some battles out for you guys in the next coming days. We did take the week off of Gigantic Quest specifically to cover Series 13 stuff, but we'll be back with it next week. Uh, we'll be, you know, doing Pikachu and Meowth next week. So yeah, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe, and obviously let me know how you rank these Pokemon. And I'll see you guys in the next one.